All right, ladies and gentlemen, back again, man. You already know it's your boy DQ, season five, the Gift is Free podcast, man. And today, man, I got a special, special guest, man. Long overdue. Yeah. We've been trying to get him since season two, man. I've known him for quite some time, man. Short <laughs> stint, but man, we locked in and we've been good ever since, man. Nothing but respect <laughs> and love for sure. Today, I got my man Jamal Haywood in here, man, from 9450 Training, bro. Oh, man. Oh, man. One you. of the best trainers in the world, man. How Thank you doing you. today, bro? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yes, it has been a long time coming for us to get connected for this interview. Yes, sir, man. I, I know we've been running around. Your schedule is crazy. I know my schedule is very varying. I was working crazy over the summer. We was trying to get this done for a couple years, man. Sure. So I'm super excited to have you in sure. here, man. So, uh, man, just to start, as always, ask, man, how you feeling, man? How's everything going for you? You good? You know Everything's what I'm going well. I mean, it's a new year. Um, so, obviously, new goals, new aspirations. So, just trying to take everything, uh, take things day by, uh, one day by a time. Mm -hmm. So, on the day-to-day, -day, would you say most of your day is just consider probably about 80% just mostly training? Because, I mean, I want to just reiterate that. When I say one of the best trainers in the world, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... There is no question that he's one of the best. You got some of the top athletes from the area and even abroad talking about how well he does his job, man. So does, does the training take up mostly 85, 90% of your day? It depends on the season. So now it's kind of a slower season. So I'm able to probably do more studying, mm -hmm. um, more networking. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as most people recently know, I did uh, – dip off to China for a little bit. It was supposed to be an extended stay, but I'm back. Um, so that's something that I was able to do during this time frame. Uh, probably would not have been possible during the summer unless it just made sense. Um, but got high school kids, couple pros, more so college players that's still around, that's locally, that go to local schools and stuff like that. So dealing with them. So probably like eight to ten people a day 12 people as opposed to summertime where it's about 20 to 30 people a day oh yeah it's very hectic yeah i've so, seen it for myself yeah, no for sure yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so um and, but that that time is approaching fast um once high school season is over the high school kids will be more available so that'll pick up and then once that comes around which is like around march april mm -hmm. Before you know it, May is here, and I'm pretty much booked May to probably like September. So um, I'm kind of enjoying this downtime, but I mean, like I said, the new year started, so that spring summer is approaching pretty fast. As you can see, the uh, at nighttime it's starting to get a little longer now. Absolutely. Yeah. Before the it was getting darker, like around four fifty. Mm -hmm. Now it's like a five thirty, five forty, where the sun's going down fully. So. That time is approaching fast. Yeah, starting to creep up on that no, time, for sure. man. For sure, for sure. All right, man, I, I don't want to go too far. I'm going to come back to the training because um, that's obviously, you know, I, I, the main reason why I wanted to get you on is to kind of get a different aspect of thinking. Okay. I've had all athletes on here, basketball, football, um, both past and present. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you being a former athlete still is an athlete, but being a former mm -hmm. athlete, going to be professional and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a different conversation because me and you are kind of closer to each other than we are to the athletes. Absolutely. To me, and Absolutely. that's my opinion. No, I get it. Um, I, val I, I really, really value your opinion as far as hoops is concerned because mm -hmm. I need. I see you've been around the block, yeah. and also at the same token, like I said, you went to go do the professional thing, yeah. and then you've what we call evolve into doing what you're doing now with the training. Right. And we also have side conversations about different games and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people people will be surprised how much we do truly talk. I probably talk to you a probably lot. maybe twice a day. A lot. A yeah. Lot. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to let you know that, man, face to face. I definitely want to tell you I value your opinion on the hoop. So thank you um, to get started, man. Where are you from? Um, born and raised at, or did you move around a lot? You from Maryland? Did you move around a lot as a child? Uh, where did you kind of set your ground at? Where your parents set your ground at for you as a child? So I'm originally from New York. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Mm. Um, went to uh, elementary, middle school, and high school out there. Then decided to go to junior college uh, in Buffalo, New York. Um, as a child, when you were coming up in Brooklyn, because I mean, 
And I'm going to just throw this out there for people that don't know. When you say he's from Brooklyn, did you want to establish what side of Brooklyn you was from? <laughs> so I grew up in East Flatbush. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Now, now we got some more track, yeah, right? Yeah. I went, so, to, I went to Nazareth High School, um, mm -hmm. which was in the B Conference. Um, so we played against a lot of famous players. I graduated the year, same year as Omar Cook, mm -hmm. Talik Brown, <laughs> and Andre Barrett. Mm -hmm. uh, three legends. Yes. Uh, I probably know Talik a little bit more because that's who I played against the most mm -hmm. out of the three. Um, but I'm familiar with the other two. Yeah. Um, so I always get asked who I thought was better, yada, 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 because uh, I'm familiar with the three. But that's who I, the class I graduated with. Yeah, that's and it's, it's funny because, like, again, it's another segue. I was... I was asking that to kind of figure out who your influences was when you was coming up as a basketball player. Because being in Brooklyn, I have family that lives in Brooklyn off of Myrtle mm -hmm. Avenue. So okay. they right there in the mix of it. And, you know, me being from down here, I wasn't used to just seeing the atmosphere mm -hmm. of basketball mm -hmm. being that prevalent. Basketball court here, basketball court yeah. there. But everywhere you learn. Like, I mean, Washington Park, that was my park that I went to mm -hmm. every day that I was there. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody there every day I was there. Yep. So kind of describe the atmosphere when you're dealing with that coming up. Everybody's playing basketball and everybody wants to be great at basketball. Kind of talk about your influences and maybe some kind of like some things you had to push through early on before you got to high school to become a better player. So um, influences when I was a kid, when I really started like, I guess, getting into basketball, it was more so just watching the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then following my brother. My brother played at a Division One school. He was older than me. Um, he played in high school as well, also too. Um, but influences Jordan. Mm. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I was a Jordan fan, but I still watched Magic and everybody else. Right. Watched the Knicks. It was a lot of clashes in the house because my parents was Knicks fans, um, and I was a Jordan fan. So mm -hmm. you know that. Way. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, just going to the park with my friends. I mean. We didn't, the difference obviously with here and uh, in that area of Brooklyn, we didn't really have a, much, a bunch of rec centers mm -hmm. just like everywhere, like here, we got parks. So a lot of, I didn't actually play on an indoor court till I got to high school. Mm. I may have, may have, maybe one time, but everything was outside. Mm. Either on my block, let the cars go by, somebody got a hoop, we playing outside, half court, two and two, three and three, mm -hmm. for hours. Mm -hmm. um, or go to the local park, um, play full court, hours. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the time of the day. Yeah. Um, obviously, shoot, if we ain't got school, there's no telling how long we're gonna be out there. Absolutely. Um, so that was, that was pretty much it. Um, total opposite of my upbringing in regards to like how my parents were raising me because my family's West Indian. So they are more heavy into schoolwork. So West Indians, they're either going to be one of the two. They're going to be really strict and focus on school and not really focus on sports like that. Or they're going to be extremely into the party life. Right. So it's one or the other. So my family was, my parents was on the more stricter side. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really care for basketball like that. Love them to death and they're yeah. still together. Um, would do anything for them, but that's just the way it was. So yeah. I was totally opposite of what they wanted. My brother in the sports, but he was into his book. I didn't really care for school. Right. I, if you asked me when I was seven, I was like, I want to go to the NBA. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's the only thing I was thinking about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that uh, those are my influence. His friends, you know, watching him and other people, just trying to be around the game, playing all the time. Um, like I said earlier, it was no real direction. So if I see Jordan do something on the, on TV, I'm gonna go outside try to do that too. Um, and kids still do that now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of more unnecessary stuff now than it was back in the day. It was more basic back in the day, right. um, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, that was, that was it. Uh, yeah. just hope and it was no set time to get up 300 shots. You just got to figure just it get out. Up there and get on yeah, it yeah, yeah. every day. So uh, obviously, as you know, that's probably the missing thing for kids now because that developed the competitive size and that's the dog right. for people, including myself and, and wanting to compete and wanting to win and not just letting up easy and stuff like that. Where now, as you can say, you would say as well also, these kids, 
a little on the soft side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's it's a little bit more convenient for them now. For sure. It's more comfortable and convenient. I say, like, I don't know who's soft and who ain't, but I know it's more convenient for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As an individual, as a basketball player, I know the things and advantages that you have now mm -hmm. are way more than what was had before. But for me, I, I mean, I'll have to echo that statement. Yeah, some of them are soft. Yeah. <laughs> soft and, I say, and I say that not to, like, directly call an uh, individual player, an uh, individual kid soft now, mm -hmm. but it's just, like, everything is handed out, like, there's, a, there's this here, there's this there, there's this here, there's this here, there's this here. Mm -hmm. It's all laid out for you. Yep. That wasn't the case back then. Nope. It's like, just get up, go outside, got to figure it out. Yep. And then, there's no there's no figuring out. Like, you know, I, I had this discussion with some parents and kids now. It's like, parents now, because there's trainers, okay, you have this workout this time, you got a pet workout that time, you got a regular workout at that time. So I'm taking you here, I'm taking you here, I'm taking you there. Mm-hmm. I played four years of high school basketball. My father took me to the gym once. Other than that, walk, take a bite. Mm-hmm. Go get it how you got to. So, yeah. Growing up in um in Brooklyn, man, you you you're susceptible to a lot of things. You kept your head on straight and um and kept your mind focused on, you know, kind of being saying staying out of trouble, I should say. I mean, I'm pretty sure you got into some little things here and there, but um for the most part, the things that were, hmm, I would say, around you in your in in your atmosphere, because being in Brooklyn in the '90s, especially in Flatbush or in, in East New York or anywhere over on that side, mm -hmm. it was very dangerous. Yeah, it's uh, if I stayed in the original neighborhood that I was born in, it probably could have went either way. Mm -hmm. uh, being moving to Flatbush, not saying that it was pieces and cream there but my neighborhood was kind of cool I wasn't far it's kind of like Baltimore like you could be on a cool block mm -hmm. but three four blocks away yeah it's some, it's some BS now it's, it's crazy because this, this young generation is wild like mm -hmm. I mean I never like a few years ago like I was talking to my mom and she said somebody driving down the block and just let off some shots that's never that never happened when I was younger. Granted, I seen a bunch of different things, but it's just different now. But you know, circling back to then, um, just hanging around my brothers, my brother, um, his friends, which he wasn't a fan of because you know they weren't on the same type of time they was trying to be on. Right. But they they helped me stay focused on what I wanted to focus on, which was basketball. Right. Um, I didn't really start really taking school serious probably till I started getting letters for college. Mm -hmm. Um, it just wasn't right interesting to me. Um, now when I started getting those letters, it was like, all right, yeah, I gotta do my school work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was able to stay away from the distractions back then, even shooting high school. The gang wars was crazy. Mm -hmm. Crips and Bloods, like, it got real heavy. And obviously, growing up, you know that to be on the West Coast and stuff like that, where, shoot, my high school was walking distance from Tilden. Crips at one school, Bloods at the other school. Many times I came out of high school, fight there, fight there, fight there, fight there. Somebody got stabbed, somebody got stabbed. So, I mean... It is what it is. Yeah. You just got to pray and stay safe. Yeah, know how to navigate. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, walking home at night wasn't <laughs> the easiest. I can't imagine. <laughs> like, I keep it a being. Cause me and a couple players walking home, got held up at gunpoint. We got robbed. Mm -hmm. And this is at what age? I was in high school. I was sixteen. Damn. So maybe sophomore, junior, maybe junior, junior year. Yeah, junior year. Jesus. Yeah. Teammate Ava Rex on another teammate Ava Rex on. Let me get that. Oh yeah, that was that time too. Yeah, let me yeah, get that. That was that time. Let and even speaking that. to the gang, like the gang stuff that was going on, New York got really big into that in the nineties because of the jails. Exactly. And they came from the jails and it's yeah. transferred onto the streets. Exactly. So at that time, it was just. Exactly. That's why I kind of asked you, like being in that environment and being able to stay on the straight and narrow. That's a feat in itself. Yeah, and like that, you yeah. said, you had a brother 
and a couple of friends that was, you know what I mean, kind of had their head on to basketball, yeah. stuff like that. So at that, so, but at that time when I was sixteen, my brother was gone. He was mm. in the service. Oh, okay. Yeah, he so he wanted to go into the service. Yeah. When okay. I, when he he left when I was thirteen. Oh, so okay. At that time, I was pretty much left for myself to fend for myself. How did you adjust to that? It was tough, um, just because. That's like a safety net. Yeah. Whether good thing or bad thing, whether stuff could be blamed on him and not blamed on me, that was a safety net. That was something to look at. Like, okay, yeah, I may not do everything that you're doing, but it's an example. Whereas now that example is gone, kind of what I want to do, and there's no other examples anymore. Mm -hmm. And granted, his friends looked out for me, but... It wasn't the same because that wasn't my group. Yeah. That wasn't my crew. Mm -hmm. I was only around them because he was here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, obviously, I developed my own friends, and we did the same thing, but we're on the same level. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, we're learning just as, as the next person. You know what I'm saying? We don't have those examples. So, I didn't have that example anymore. So, like I said, 16, that situation happened. Took his jacket, took his jacket, took my money out of my pocket. And what, I'm 16, what, what I'm going to do? I'm gonna try to fight somebody with a hammer? No. Mm -hmm. It's not smart. Not smart at all. Exactly. Give it up. <laughs> Let alone two. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Come on, things could have went real left. And that's the thing, like, what they were coming... Them jackets, them two, they would have killed y'all behind them jackets. Exactly. That's what people are maybe. I don't know if people are understanding the... the, the I would say the level that the Averex was. The importance of an Averex back at then. At that time. Oh, man. Genuine leather. In the wintertime. They would have killed y'all for them jackets. Exactly. So you have to, you know, like you said, you got to know how to navigate. You got to know yeah. what battles to fight. Got to let that go. As a 16-year-old, yeah. that's really, really something that's super traumatic. Like, and we might not even know, I mean, we know now, yeah. obviously, but back then it's like, man, you probably carried on maybe the next week or two. It could have went either way. I never told my parents because um, it was just like, it, it, it was embarrassing, but not really embarrassing because it was just like, okay, yeah. Don't nobody want to get robbed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, looking at the situation, what was the other option? Yeah. That's 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 what I was getting to. So either you got to take that on the chin or it turns you into something else. Three of us, five of them. Not saying that we couldn't do that, but three of us, ten of them, because mm -hmm. it's five of them, but two people got Two got guns. Yeah, yeah bro. So it's like... <laughs> Yeah. There's nothing we can do. No, nah, you got you had to be smart. Had to exactly. play that was smart. That was that was <laughs> you still here because of that decision. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. so man, that's had crazy. That, I had to let that go. Um, outside of that, didn't really have any bad like situations. Um, of course, me being young and me being new to uh, the private school life, and people that been to private school, they can see that they can seek that out. Like, yeah, he's not used to that. So. People testing you and stuff like that, but outside of that, it was nothing really, really that was dramatic that happened. Um, so I was able to skate through high school. Um, like I said earlier, I didn't really take school serious. Um, I mean, shoot, I used to make up fake report cards and all that. Mm. That's how bad I didn't like school. Mm. Um, but I will, I will give a lot of credit to my high school coach. He was actually a cop. Um, he instilled a lot of values and a lot of discipline into us, and he was crazy also too. I mean, I can give you countless examples. We would lose games, you know, and he would let people sit in on our practice sometimes. One day he blacked out, kicked everybody out. He locked the door, threw ball racks, went to his office, came back down with his gun, waving it around. So we all in there like, he not going to do nothing, but we're still shook. Absolutely. Because it's just like, we know he crazy, but we know he not that crazy, but we know he crazy. Crazy enough. Exactly. Yep. To even go do that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, looking back at it now, it's like, that's just an example of how he's trying to teach us to grow up. Mm -hmm. Kids now might look at it like, oh my God, that's torture. Like, I'm calling the cops. Right. Oh, they definitely calling the police. Yeah, nobody said nothing. Absolutely. That stayed in the house. Mm -hmm. Whereas nowadays... That's leaking out immediately. Absolutely. Immediately.